Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this flexibility flow. So really just working on improving full body flexibility in our shoulders, our spine, our hips, the back of the legs, trying to really get a little bit of everything in this practice. So let's begin in just a little toe squat. You can tuck your toes underneath you as you sit your hips over the top of your heels and maybe roll that little toe out of the way. And try to just sit up tall here as you shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears. And we're gonna inhale to reach the arms up. And as you lift and look up, try to press the floating ribs down. Open into your cactus shape with your arms, holding here, palms shining forward. Keep the floating ribs in and see if you can just squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. And just get a little bit of a range of motion here keeping the shrug of the shoulder blades so that deep squeeze through your upper back and you're just kind of lifting and lowering your elbows a few inches and let's take eagle arms right arm under your left binding once or twice press your shoulders down and away move your hands away from you and tuck your chin towards your chest relax your head and inhale release open it up again and we'll go right away to the other side left arm under the right binding once or twice tucking the chin down forehead to the biceps You're probably feeling this through the toes and through the feet we're not here for much longer last breath here and go ahead and open it up and let's release bring your fingertips out in front of you release that toe squat roll into your ankles and just from hands and knees and tabletop step your right foot back behind you and push into your right heel just stretching into your calf and getting into your ankle and you can cross your right foot over towards the bottom left side of your mat it'll probably go off the mat push into your right hip and look back towards that left foot so getting a nice side body stretch and coming back through to center step your right foot to the outer edge of your palm at the top of the mat for your lizard pose you might need to rearrange your stance a little bit here so that you have your right knee directly over the top of your ankle relax your shoulder blades down we're gonna stay here for about five deep breaths it might be nice just to close your eyes to tune in to the sensations let your hips get a little bit heavier We'll transition to shoelace pose or gomukhasana so you can start shifting your hips back and you're going to cross your right thigh over the left one so you're trying to stack right knee over the left and move your heels away from one another if you're feeling quite stiff and tight you're just gonna hold and press back from here otherwise if you can you're gonna let your hips come down to the mat and you can play a little bit maybe widening the feet further out See if you can lift up. And before we go into our fold, we're gonna add a side bend. Reach your left arm up towards the sky and crawl the fingertips out. Left arm reaches up and over. Keep reaching out through your left hand and left arm. And let's come all the way back through to center. And now keeping this cross, you're just going to straighten your left leg. So in your half shoelace pose, I honestly think this is probably the most intense <laughs> hamstring stretch. So you might already be feeling it just from this. 
but if you'd like you can also play around by folding forward and I'm making this a very passive forward fold letting my spine round and really don't worry if you're not folding very far this is a tricky pose but super effective at improving flexibility through our lower body see if you can relax a little more into it push your hands into the floor let's lift up we'll come into reverse tabletop pose to stretch at the top of our shoulders so you can scoot your hips forward feet hip width distance apart palms shoulder width distance apart push into your feet squeeze your glutes to lift your hips and lower back up and really try to reach your heart up towards the ceiling so you get a nice stretch through your shoulders down your arms really great for shoulder mobility and let's release cross at the ankles tabletop pose and we'll find the sequence over on the other side start by just pressing your left heel back and drawing your lower belly in and let's cross that left foot over to the right push into your left hip and look back big side body stretch along the left side of your waist coming back through to center into your lizard pose step your foot to the top of the mat on the outer edge of your left hand maybe bring that back knee a couple inches further back here and see if you can keep pushing into your big left toe not letting all of your body weight sink into your wrists keep pushing into your fingertips and knuckles slow steady breath in and out through your nose We're coming into shoelace or gomukhasana pose so you can push into your heel you're going to cross your left thigh over your right one and move your feet away from one another as you start to send and shift your hips back into your side bend left fingertips reach out right arm extends up and over Try to roll your right shoulder back, soften your head, your neck, let it be heavy. Coming back through to center, half shoelace into a forward fold, right leg straightens. Keep your left knee aligned as much as possible over the top of that right knee and fold on down any amount no pushing pulling or forcing back up and we'll take reverse table again so moving your hips out in front of you a little bit spread the fingertips wide squeeze through your glutes engage through your quads as you press and lift up as high as you can go keep pressing your shoulders away from your ears so there's lots of length for your neck and let's release 
tabletop pose, transitioning into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back. And let's bend our right knee as much as possible. Keep the left leg straight and push down into your left heel. Keep both arms straight as you reach your chest towards your thighs. Switch sides, left knee is bent, right leg is straight, push down into your right heel. Come through to center. Let's reach our right leg up, bend your knee, open up your hip, three-legged dog. Try to lean a little bit over to the left so your right knee goes as high as you can get it. And we'll come to Virabhadrasana 2, our warrior 2. Step that right foot in between your palms, back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat as you lift on up. Open up through your arms, palms facing down to the floor. We'll try to squeeze that right knee open. Now go ahead and straighten your front leg. Left hand down, right arm reaches all the way up and back. And let this carry you through. Maintain the length in your triangle pose. Trikonasana, reach that right arm all the way forward and all the way down. Left arm stretches to the sky. And now let's bring our left arm bicep along the ear, fingertips reaching to the top of the mat. Looking down to the floor, start to bend into your front knee. We're coming into a standing splits variation. Start with your hips parallel to the floor. So you're probably not going to be lifted up very high. Instead of working on really opening the flexibility of that standing leg or that like leg that's kicking up, we're trying to work on stretching our supporting leg down into the right one. So roll your left hip down. Fingertips are there for support. Evenly distributing your body weight here. Take one more full breath and find your lunge. So step that left foot all the way to the back. Runner's lunge, fingertips are on the floor. You can shift a little bit back and forth. And we'll come back into our three-legged dog. So plant your palms, right leg extends and reaches. Bend your right knee, open up your hip. And let's come into our pigeon pose on the right side. And bring your right knee close towards your right hand. Maybe shift that back leg back. Square off through your hips and pelvis and fold on down. Five slow, steady breaths here. Let gravity pull you deeper into the pose. And just start to lift your chest up. We're gonna stay seated coming into square pose. So you can roll onto your right hip in order to bring your left leg in front of you. Square pose, you're trying to stack your left shin directly over the right one. This is too much. You're just going to bring your shin slightly in front. Otherwise, it's right on top. And you might work at just holding the pose from here. Maybe you fold straight forward, or you can add a bit of a twist by facing over towards your left leg and left foot, sorry, and folding on down. See if you can wiggle your left arm towards the sole of your foot can help to provide a little bit of traction. Mm. 
One more big belly breath. And let's lift to rise on up and just cross at your ankles, tabletop pose. Before we go into the sequence on the other side, we're gonna find thread the needle. So you're going to reach your right arm underneath you, shoulder and ear, lower to the mat, any variation of this pose that you'd like. The further you get your right arm underneath you, the more you'll feel this through your upper back. Try not to twist through your hips and through your lower back. Keep pushing a little bit into your right hip. Let's push into our left hand, come all the way up. Second side, left arm reaches underneath you, shoulder and ear to the floor. Any variation, pressing into your left hip this time. lift on up and we'll find our downward dog Adho Mukha Svanasana curl and lift you're welcome to take a vinyasa if you'd like I'm making this more of a flexibility oriented practice so not adding too much strength I'm just gonna hang out here but if you'd like you can inhale forward to plank exhale to lower your push-up inhale into your back bend cobra or up dog and we all meet downward facing dog for the second side and just like what we did before go ahead and bend your left knee push into your right heel see if you're able to press your chest towards your thighs a little bit more the second time around now and alternate so that your right knee bends push down into your left heel Coming back through to center, let's extend our left leg up to the sky, bend your knee, open up your hip, three like a dog, really squeeze to lift that knee up even higher. And we step to Virabhadrasana two, left foot steps in between your hands, back foot parallel to the shorter edge of your mat to lift on up, palms facing down to the floor and think of really opening and squeezing that left knee towards your little toe while also pressing your right hip back. Sink your hips down even lower. Let's straighten our left leg, exalt from here, left arm reaches up and over. Big side body stretch and maintain this length as you shift forward. Trikonasana triangle pose, left hand down. Start by bringing your right arm up to really feel your shoulder pull back your hip pull back and you can bring your bicep along the ear to get deeper through the side of the waist both legs are straight look down to the mat we'll start to bend into that front knee standing splits with straight and squared hips so your lifted right leg is not going to be going as high as what you'd be capable of doing if you let yourself open up the hip don't worry about that so much Focus on stretching the back of your left leg. Slow, steady breaths. Not too much weight in your hands. Into your runner's lunge. Right foot steps to the back of the mat. And just rock a little bit back and forth. We transition into our three-legged dog again. Plant your palms, left leg goes up, bend your knee, open your hip. So we can come into our pigeon pose. Ikapada Raja Kapotasana. Left knee to your left hand. Stretch that back leg behind you. Square off through your hips. And take your time before we fold on down. Soften your arms, your chest, your shoulders.
One more big deep breath as you are. And start to rise on up. We'll be coming from here into square pose, sometimes called double pigeon as well. So as you lean on your left hip, bring your right leg out. You're trying to stack your right shin directly on top of the left one. Maybe hold up, you can fold forward, or you can twist a little bit over towards that right foot, maybe hooking your arm to the sole of that foot to facilitate the twist. One more big breath in. Start to come on up. We'll cross at the ankles. Instead of doing thread the needle this time, go ahead and lower down onto your belly. And we'll come into a lying chest opener, sometimes called a broken wing in yin yoga. So you're reaching your right arm out to the side. Elbow is just a little bit higher than your shoulder palm is flat to the floor and you're looking for like a 90 degree angle into that right arm and you can roll onto your right hip right ear right shoulder left hand might just push into the floor you can bring your left hand back behind you sometimes even stepping the left foot back can really help to intensify this pose just notice which variation feels the most suitable for you right now We're looking for a big stretch through our pectorals, into our shoulder, and down the arm. And let's release. We'll go to the other side. Left arm extends, bending the elbow, finding that 90 degree angle again. And you roll on left hip, left ear, left shoulder. Push into your right hand. Maybe bring your right hand back behind you and step the right foot back, whichever felt good. See if you can do the same thing on the second side. No tension in your neck. Imagine you can breathe directly into that left shoulder. One more big breath in here. Uh, let's release, make your way back through to center. Slide your hands along the top of your rib cage. Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Roll your shoulders back. Squeeze your elbows in, open through your heart. Think of lifting and pushing into the tops of your feet. And exhale, lower down and just pad or like support yourself basically with your left arm so that you can just bend into your right knee hold on to the foot get a nice quad stretch here you want to think of pushing your pubic bone into the floor as you draw that heel in a little closer and also push down into your right knee try not to widen your knees more than your hips and also don't let your heel your right heel open up to the side Try to keep it directly over the top of your sit bone. One more breath here. And we'll go find the other side. Same thing. Forehead on your right forearm. Pull that left heel in towards your glute. Lengthen your tailbone. Push into your pubic bone. 
Keep everything hip width distance apart. We're going to be setting ourselves up for Dhanurasana. Reach back with both hands, grab a hold of your feet, and you can push to lift on up. And I'm not lifting up very high in this one because I tend to let my lower back do all of the work. And I'm really working myself on getting into my upper back a little more. So it might not look like much, <laughs> but it's the perfect variation for me right now. Just squeeze and lift. And let's release down, press back, Balasana, Child's Pose. You can either keep your knees together, especially if you feel like that went into your lower back. Otherwise, you can take a wide like a Child's Pose, big toes together, folding on down. And let your hips be really heavy here. One more breath wherever you are. And before we finish, we're just gonna come into one last downward facing dog, stretching everything out and really just taking the opportunity to notice how this one feels after our practice. If you're able to get your heels a little closer to the mat or just more length in your spine. And you can walk your feet to the middle of the mat as you walk your hands to the center as well, just for your ragdoll fold, Uttanasana, release it down. You can definitely bend your knees here if you'd like, any variation of this pose. Malasana, yogi squat, bend into your knees, hands at your heart, lift on up. come all the way down laying on our backs it might feel good to draw your knees in towards your belly giving them a big squeeze maybe rocking a little bit side to side just check in to see what you need before coming into Shavasana our final resting pose And whenever you feel ready, go ahead and open up through your arms and your legs. Close your eyes and find some stillness here. Noticing the effects of your practice on your muscles, on your joints, on your breath. And letting yourself relax fully for about two minutes.
And let's wake back up. Stretch your arms up overhead. Reach your fingers away from your toes. And we can roll to one side, pressing up. Come to take a seat. And close your eyes once you're there. Hands at your heart. Let's close with one chant of Om, inhaling to chant. Big breath in. Om. Namaste. Thank you so much for doing this flexibility yoga practice with me. I hope you feel really stretchy and that this was an enjoyable practice for you. Please do leave me a comment. Let me know how it went. And if you would like to stay a little longer on your mat, this video here would be a great short meditation to follow this up with. Do subscribe to my channel to support free yoga on the internet. And hopefully I'll see you again very soon.